Welcome to lesson number four, and in this lesson, I'm going to try and get going as fast as I could. I just recorded this a second ago, but it was 44 minutes long, and I am limited to 15 minutes on YouTube, so I've got to go a lot faster than I did last time and leave a lot more stuff out, unfortunately, but I'll hit the highlights. Um, this is what our site basically looks like um, without any styling. So in this lesson, we're going to do cascading style sheets, or CSS, um, which allows us to style HTML to make it a lot more attractive so eventually it looks like this. Um, one thing I didn't hit on in the last lesson I wish I would have um, the difference between IDs and classes. IDs are used when you want to create an element that um, is only used one time and you can reference it in your CSS style sheet that's why it's important. Classes are used all a whole bunch of times you can reuse them over and over and over again so you can use, see I use classes for everything within our blog because there's going to be tons of blog postings and so we want to use classes to style that content uh, opposed to an ID. So that's kind of something I didn't hit on, I wish I would have, so we covered that. Um, first, let's just do some real basic styling just so I can kind of show you how it works, and then I will show you the full file that I used uh, to style my site. Um, let's start with the H1 tag because that's where the logo is held. And um, basically, you can set all of the properties here to see, you know, you'll see how it gets styled as we do this. Uh, let's do font size, like a type, and we'll do 72 pixels. And let's save that and see if it works. Okay, and one other thing I didn't mention, how this works is, so we have a style file within our CSS folder, and in our main file that the browser will call, we are linking it. So this is calling for the CSS folder and the style file within it. And that's this file here. So that's how it works. Um, we can also do like font weight, bold. Now we can bold, we can do font family. And we'll do like Helvetica, Arial, and Sans Serif. And the reason you'd use three is because if Helvetica doesn't exist on the computer, it falls back to Arial. If that doesn't exist, it falls back to Sans Serif, which surely someone has one of those. Um, but it's kind of a safety net, is all that is. Um, we can also use some CSS3 properties, and I highly recommend them. It l lets you just, you know, you can get rid of so many images by using CSS3 a lot more. Um, you can use things like border radius, uh, pixels. Oh, well, we won't see it yet because there's nothing around it. Let's first, let's do padding, and let's do 10 pixels all around it. And then let's do uh, a border of one pixel. We'll just use dash for fun. And let's choose red, so it's easy to see. Let me get rid of that. Um, then let's also do a background color, and let's do, this is what I use for the site, 0, a, a, 0, D, 7. So let's save that and see where we're sitting. So now you can see we have rounded corners, we have a red, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's a red dash line, and we've got a, a blue background. Um, <laughs> just so you can see this, I'll make it bigger. Um, we can align our font in the middle, text align, center, and there we go. And then some more CSS3 stuff, I'll try to keep them all together here, border radius. We could do like box shadow, and first is the x-axis, so we'll do, um, we'll do zero pixels, we don't want it um, on the x-axis going right or left. Then we have the y-axis, let's do two pixels, so it's going to go down two pixels. And then the blur, we'll do four pixels. So it's going to be four pixels of blur, and then choose a color. And we'll do a dark gray. And now you can see there's a dark, subtle, dark gray shadow there, which actually helps make it look much more realistic. Well, just so you can see it, we'll do 10 pixels and four pixels. This is going to be like really exaggerated, but I really want you to see it. So actually, it's not that exaggerated. But there you go, there's a nice little text shadow there. Um, we can also, or box shadow, we can also do text shadow, and it's as easy as doing text shadow, and it works exactly the same. Zero pixels, two pixels, um, five pixels, and let's choose like something, let's do, let's do white. I don't know what that's gonna look like, we'll see. There's like a glow behind it now, so pretty cool stuff that you can do. Um, some other things that you can do are like uh, pseudo connectors, like hover or pseudo selectors, I'm sorry. Um, you can change the cursor to a pointer, so it looks like a little hand when you roll over it. 
we can change the background color here to let's do like a really light white almost white and we can also make the box shadow smaller 0 pixels, 2 pixels, 5 pixels we'll do the same color and just show you how this works you roll over it that's not oh, what I do oh I did this last time too sorry I referenced the wrong H tag there we go oh background what's wrong with that hmm H1 hover oh for out of six there we go so yeah there can be problems created but you can kind of tell now when I'm rolling over you can do pretty drastic things with CSS 3D and you used to be able to and you can even do like transforms and stuff where these boxes shrink or get larger lots of really cool things that I won't have time to get into unfortunately um, that's basically all I'm going to cover there I just kind of wanted to show you uh, just some basic things uh, head over to the w3.org um, let me make sure that's the right site before I send you too far Yep, w3.org. There's tons of learning classes, all kinds of good stuff on here uh, to really get you going. And uh, they are the official spec writers, so they know what's going to go in and what's not. Um, now let's go ahead and paste in the CSS file. And here it is. It's a lot of code, so I'm going to have to go real quickly. Um, basically, these are comments here. It's just the slash with the asterisk and there's a CSS document just to state at the top a lot of people will even do this and provide all kinds of information user agreements etc etc um, our reset at the top and a reset basically removes all the default stylings that browsers provide uh, naturally um, you want to be in control of your own style so I highly recommend using some sort of reset even if it's not this thorough uh, Eric Myers reset is a really popular one if you just google it it will pop up uh, I like this one it's maybe not even quite as uh, thorough as Eric Myers is um, these are our document tags for the most part wrapper falls in there uh, because it doesn't really have any semantic meaning it's just a, a placeholder uh, and then the header I'll come back and cover some of these this is everything that falls in the head of the file the article everything that falls within the blog of the file Footer, obviously, everything that falls at the bottom, and then article specifics. These are things for people when they're writing the blog. They can actually use these tags to spice up their post. Um, just some things for link postings and the hover. Um, this is something to emphasize certain text, and um, this just catches people's eyes. It's a notice if you want them to something to pop out. So. Um, Here's one of the things I'll cover. So as you can see here, I'm using some of the those special CSS3 selectors, but it's a little bit more complex than what I did in the first demo. I have the vendor prefixes added on to the beginning. As you can tell, it's still the exact same thing. Border, bottom, left, radius. That selects the bottom left corner of the div element. Um, actually, this is the anchor tag of the div element and gives it a five pixel curve. Uh, now down here, and I also did it on the right side, now down here, this is specifically for Firefox. So older versions of Firefox that don't support the official CSS3 specification will fall back on this. Um, WebKit is for Safari and Chrome, but Chrome now supports the official and has for quite some time the official version. Um, o is for Opera. And those are basically the big modern browsers. Uh, IE9 will be able to use the original um, the actual specification itself older versions won't so they'll just have square corners but I don't think that's a big deal um, it doesn't hurt the functionality at all it just isn't quite as elegant and maybe that will be some uh, motivation for them to upgrade their browser so um, I told it to display block it's important to tell anchor tags to display block um, just so that they are considered a block level element within the document um, there's the hover pseudo connector I keep saying connector, selector. Um, to reference an image, it's pretty easy. You just URL and then you have parentheses and then these two dots basically say climb out of the folder that I'm in and then go into these folders. So basically climb out of the 
CSS folder, go into the images folder, and then find the new logo.ping, center it, no repeat. And then I actually did a text init because if you recall, logo, it actually should say site title. But if you go over here now, let me save this, I'll show you what this looks like. Never did that. Oh, wrong one. This is what it looks like now. So basically, it's the styling of the site. And, um, and it should say site right there in the middle, but it doesn't because I did this text indent and it shoots it way off the page, 9,999 pixels. But since it's only affecting the text, the image can still appear in the middle. So it's kind of a little trick. The reason you want to include that text at all is so that search engines can find it and it's an important part of search engine optimization. And we'll cover that thoroughly in a later lesson. Um, article details, uh, I just don't have a lot of time to get into these. I'll show you this little trick. Uh, I'm floating the date and floating the author. There it is, float left and float right. So you can see this is floated left and this is floated right and they're within the same div that is details. Now within details I have this overflow hidden and what this does is it's kind of a little hack. Floated elements by default are not they don't fall within the document flow and so you can tell this container collapses on itself because it thinks there's nothing in it because these two items are floated. Um, but you can use overflow hidden and all of a sudden it takes up space. Some people use another, like they add another div and they'll name it like clear, like with the class of clear flip fix and um, but I just did it this way. I think it's a pretty simple way to fix floated elements. Um, as you can tell, I used a lot of these uh, CSS3 types of things to kind of give these some shine, changing, just vaguely changing the box shadow as you roll over and the color of the border and the color of the background and the text shadow. And the text shadow here, I did a negative one pixel opposed to just one pixel. And I think it kind of looks nice because it's, uh, I don't know, I just think it looks nice because it looks like it's inset but you'll see that there's a difference between different browsers and how they handle shadows like that. So basically that's all I have time for, unfortunately. Um, if you have any questions, please hit me up because there is a lot of information here I can't cover, but a lot of it's just like font sizes. Oh, I will cover what the difference between padding and um, padding and margin is. So the, the more H3 tag has a padding of five pixels. That's this right here. If we give it a padding of 10 pixels, you'll see that the button gets bigger. So now it's larger than it used to be. Now, the difference here is if we margin controls the spacing between elements, five pixels. And you can tell now there's five pixels difference between the top and that. Um, so that's kind of interesting, um, margin and padding, it's not a big deal, but those are really important things to understand because they're used all the time in CSS and if you don't understand them you'll never get your page aligned like you want. Um, that's really all I have time for unfortunately. We'll be doing a ton more CSS though so maybe I can get some more in in later lessons. Um, I will see you guys over in lesson 5 we're doing our MySQL database setup um, for our tables and we'll also be um, what else are we doing? I'll just teach you a little bit about PHP admin, my admin, and we'll be using Dreamweaver to connect to a database finally. So in the next level, you, next lesson, you will need Dreamweaver. Thanks.